Hi, my name is uh, Brendan Frost. I'm a film director from Calgary. I made movies like Spaces and Reservations, which is screening across the country right now, um, but movies like uh, Chotch, Generation Y, and Best Friends for Life. Everything that's happened between us in the last few years, like, that doesn't just disappear. Sometimes I, I really miss her. Like, even though she's in the same room, or I just saw her, I... I miss her. Spaces and Reservations is, a, is an intimate relationship drama about this young couple that's Afflicted by malaise that comes from a long-term relationship, right? You know, of course, like you've been together with someone long enough, and you're both changing, and not exactly in the same ways or at the same time, and you're just not on the same plane that you were when you've been in the relationship, and so you're feeling more lonely, more sad because you're not in communication, you're not as intimate with them as you used to be, and as they're both experiencing that, these two, cu this couple in this relationship, they start to become interested in other people, separately and at different times, and they both deal with it in different ways. So the film is also about the emotional unfaithfulness that they both experience, their dabblings with other people, and it's basically about how, through the course of their relationship breaking down and falling apart, and their, essentially their breakup, they start to become closer to one another and more intimate in the way that they needed to be when they were experiencing that malaise at the beginning of their, uh, at the beginning of the film. So it's really, you know, it's about separating from someone slowly and over time and, and feeling them drift away, and it's also about having them torn away from you in a sudden and very violent way. Uh, and it's about how the experience of having a breakup is a lot like falling in love with someone because it's it's very raw and very intimate and very vulnerable thing. There's anniversary coming up soon. How are things going with Casey, though? My films are always motivated by a particular like emotional imperative to share something that I find very difficult to share. And in the case of this movie, it was I was wrestling with what these two experiences meant to me and what lessons I could draw from them. And ultimately, like the the movie, you know, in hindsight for me is about becoming okay with something that I initially found very hard to be okay about. You know, I set out to like really critically examine my own personal experiences, you know, in a, in a narrative way. Um, you know, the story is, is not mine, and the characters uh, in the film are, are not people that I know, and they're not uh, placeholders for myself, but you know, it's about putting people, that, you know, creating a construct and creating a system in which you can deal with the, the experiences, the emotional experiences that I had, and, and thinking about them in a, in a critical way. So. Well, I'm trying to, like, I feel like I'm slowing you down and I'm trying to keep up with you. You just think that I'm just so totally absent in this relationship that I wouldn't notice you liking somebody. I think, you know, having the opportunity to make films without intrusion and only collaboration is a really rare thing. And I definitely value immensely about the way that I make movies. There's something you, you want to say that you can't say any other way. And so I think that the wonders of DIY fashion is that the, on, the, the only priority that really matters that can be compromised is saying exactly what you want. Being as honest to that thing that you're interested in, that thing that's at the heart of a movie that you really want to, to share with people. And nobody f***s with that. In every other art form, I feel like, you know, the greatest imperative is to creatively follow what you want to do. And film is such like a, film is generally such a big industrial machine, you know? I love the small, I love small films. I love doing it at a small scale. Obviously, it'd be nice to have, you know, certain things at my disposal, more time you know, being able to pay the people who can collaborate with me, but, you know, that's that's DIY filmmaking, the pros and the cons. I'll, I'll take both of them over big level stuff any day. And action, guys.
We have too many movies. I don't know. I'm feeling something Disney-ish. Disney-ish. Something light. But I'm a, like, like a like Disney. The Omen, up with Disney. I'm very proud to mention that I think there's a, uh, a couple of filmmakers, but one filmmaker in particular from the U.S. that I, I really admire and uh, I, I, I come back to his films every time I want to make something because I find them very inspiring. I'm, I'm usually very, I, I find it hard to be inspired by big Hollywood films because even though I like a lot of them, some of them are like, they're beyond my reach to aspire to. And, and that's the films of uh, Joe Swanberg in the United States. Um, Space and Reservations was inspired by, in particular, one movie of his called Nights and Weekends from 2008 that he made with Greta Gerwig. And, like, he's, he makes little small films, often on his DV cam through the beginning of his career. And they're so unabashedly personal and, you know, deceptively simple. But they're just, he's such an unpretentious and such an honest filmmaker. He just makes films about the things that he knows and about the cultural milieu in, that he lives in. And I just, I love watching them because they, they're so natural and they're, they're so real and they're, they're so uncontrived and, and, and so full of just raw, beautiful human moments. And I, I aspire to that. I aspire to raw, beautiful human moments. And Joe Swanberg, is, his cinema is, it's imperfect, but it's full of those, those moments.